What's your name and, and where are you from? Uh, my name is Van Eggers. I am from Chicago, Illinois, and I am 30 years old. I have been skateboarding since I was five, and according to my ma, I've been doing art since I was two. So I've been doing that for, I guess, 28 years. When I was two, I was drawing stick figures, but when I was five is when I saw like the Tony Hawk Hawk 3 graphic, which was my first board. As a graphic, it's, it's god awful. Like it's the most abysmal piece of work, but like it struck me so strongly when I was like five or six. It was so impactful and I was like, wow, I want to learn how to draw that. I couldn't because I sucked at drawing. But I think that's what planted the seed initially was the Hawk 3. And by the time I think I was like nine, I had been sponsored by like a local skate shop in town. And by the time I was like 11, I had broken my heel and like my foot. I couldn't jump down anything after that. So by the time I was like 14, you know, I had already passed over like the, the opportunity of developing into like anything serious. And then after that, I just wanted to have fun. Growing up, I was always the worst at art in art class. Like, I always assumed naturally, like up until college, when I go in there, I'm gonna be worse than everyone. I just loved looking at it, and I, like, like any skateboarder looks at skateboarding and is desperate to get good at it, because they just fall completely in love with it and will devote just an inordinate amount of time to getting good at it. That's what I was with art. I had no natural talent for it. There was no promise there. I just thought graffiti was cool as shit and I need to get good at drawing so I could do like cool graffiti and cool characters and stuff that looked like skateboard art. It was, it was just an obsession, um, but a really defeating obsession because I just sucked at it. It took me so much longer to get good at drawing than the average person. I went to a liberal arts school um, called Flagler in St. Augustine, Florida. And there was amazing people in that program. Like, I know it's cool to like hate school, you know, fuck school, but that wasn't me. Like, it, it really helped me a lot. If I can give a shout out to Lauren Meyer, he was one of my professors there, and he he reshaped like the way I think about art, life, the way I approach the creative process in general. So right now I'm living in Long Beach, California. After I graduated college in Florida, I came out here to work as an independent artist, and then a lot of my friends moved out here too. So it made sense to come out here and just be with them, and then, you know, through them being the talented skaters that they are, they could help me kind of get a shoe in in the skate industry. Corey Glick, who's like this super nice guy and amazing skateboarder, like I think anyone in your audience would know who that is. We would skate the same uh, indoor park, Cream City, which is where I met him. All this to say, when I came out to California, I asked him, like, hey, could you hit up someone at Foundation Skateboards to let me into the warehouse so I can, like, give them a zine? But I didn't have, like, an online portfolio or anything. But I was like, would you guys potentially be interested in, in doing something? I think because, like, I was friends with Corey and my good friend Julian Lewis that I came out here with was one of their flow riders at the time. They were like, yeah, why not give you a chance? And so we did a series, and it came out horrible, but it was encouraging because at least they got made, and then they got, they got better from there, but it took some time. But in addition to them, I've done a couple of graphics for uh, Girl Skateboards, which is cool because that was one of my favorite companies as a kid. And then I just recently did a full series for Toy Machine, which was, that was probably like the zenith of my career up until this point. Um, I was a diehard Toy Machine kid. That was my favorite company. So I spent an incredibly long time making that series and I, I am pretty proud of how that one came out. And then I've done two boards for Death Wish as well, for JKs. And those are really fun because he's a cool dude and he has good ideas. It's way more fun if you can work with the skater. Like if you can work with the person whose name is going to be on the board and they're excited about it and they want to have their ideas involved, that is cool for me. Like recently I did a board for Julian Lewis that was entirely his idea, you know, he wanted to do something um, involving his therapist and his journey with mental health recently and his like love for 
Elliot Smith. And then like we got to work together to sort of make that um, what, what he had in mind. And like to try and like bring his vision to life is really cool. Because as like a super fan of skateboarding and skateboarders, I just like making them happy and feeling like somehow my talents are, are, are helping them, you know, fulfill their, their ultimate dream or, or whatever it is, you know. Dream project, Austin Stevens comes out of retirement and I get to do a pro board for him for Toy Machine. And same with Mike Carroll, Mike Carroll pro model. I'm six foot three and every bit of 200 pounds, so skateboarding hurts a lot. And I've been doing it for 25 years, so like, you know, the atrophy on my body is serious. So I'm pretty limited to just like ledges and manual pads and flat caps and like even that, like getting a trick on it that's marginally impressive takes a long time. And thankfully, um, I go and skate with Blake Hausinga, who's a great friend, and he's super patient and super cool and will just stay there and be encouraging. I haven't had any like real footage since I was like 13 and it wasn't even a full video part, so this would be like my first real video part. It's not anything close to like what a Long Beach skateboarder should put out, you know, but you know, it gets me some post-